Hey guys, uh, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you're going to do, for what you already done, and for what you're doing. Father, I just pray that in this moment in our time together that you will just endow me with your spirit and with power. Lord God, I pray that each heart will be touched in a different type of play, in a different way. And every ear will, will hear you in a different way, but they'll hear exactly what they need from this sermon. God, I pray that you will just, um, just fall afresh. Lord God, do what you never done with this sermon before. In the name of Jesus, amen. Speak to me, speak to me. Amen. Um, so guys, I was, I was reading a romance novel, and you know, servants come to me in the most ridiculous ways, guys. Um, they don't come when, when I'm looking at the Word of God or looking at Scripture. Oh, no. Uh, so most pastors, they have to study for, like, hours, and they spend hours doing research and whatever. But me, I'm so quirky, and the Lord knows I'm so quirky. It doesn't come to me when I'm trying, like, or whatever, Lord, I need something, Lord, I need something. It comes to me at the least spiritual moment ever. I can tell you that there was a time I was on Spotify, uh, minding my own business, uh, listening to Justin Timberlake, and um, I was listening to Justin Timberlake Mirrors. Those of you who know me know I'm a huge music fan. Uh, love all kinds of music, always have, um, all that stuff. So I was listening to Justin Timberlake Mirrors, and and all of a sudden when I heard that. When I heard that, I I got like I got a picture in my mind of Genesis three when the Lord says that that we were all born in the, we were all made in the image of God. Adam and Eve were made in the image of God, and uh, he breathed the breath of life in his image, and that image became a living soul. Um, and th that's where that sermon, we are God's mirrors from a few years ago, came from. Um, I remember um, when I was uh, out of nowhere one day, the Lord uh, started to um, minister for, through me through, uh, uh, through a Whitney Houston song. Uh, it was... Um, uh, it was saving all my love for you. <laughs> it was all of that. It was like, um, and I was saying, and he wanted me to say in that moment to somebody in that sermon, you're better than an affair. Like, and he wanted me to say how affairs can happen um, to anyone, how, how anyone can slip up and you know, it was so weird at that time because me, I'm not married. Why would he? Why would he want me to talk about affairs and stuff? Um, maybe it's a 
cautionary tale. Um, so, yes, something's come to me in the, in the most non-churchy way ever. <clears throat> so, I was, um, I was reading, um, a, a love story. It was called Twelve Steps to, to Mr. Right. And I'm almost at the end of it, but I'm not at the end of it yet. But it's about, a, it's about, um, she's like a, a dating coach who, um, has all these rules for dating. But uh, she's using these rules to hold back from life because what happened was someone, uh, a, a guy had hurt her and after he hurt her, she wrote this blog and then in this blog she came up with these rules and then with these rule she came up with classes to teach women of what to do when they're dating or whatever. But it turns out that these rules and years later this this guy comes back into her life and it turns out that these rules are and that she came up with to prevent her or whatever. Um, to protect herself are actually causing her to to be away from real love and real life. And sometimes rules and regulations are necessary. Most times they are. Uh, we we can't be in a society without rules because that would be mayhem. Um, because, like, people would be just doing what like, they did in Judges, where they were to, uh, people did what was right in their own eyes, and, and um, so we need rules to a certain extent, um, but it's when, it's when the rules become so rigid that, um, that it becomes a problem because it prevents God from breaking through in our lives and in our churches. And I think that's what, um, that's what uh, he's called me to talk about. I think that's what my assignment is to talk about today, about how to break the rules. Um, I am generally a rule follower. I, I like rules. I like sticking to them. But um, occasion, not occasionally, um, I'm learning now that sometimes the best rules are um, the rules that um, God brings. God breaks. Uh, let me let me tell you. Um, let me tell you what I mean. Um, when Moses got the Ten Commandments, for, let me go back to the garden. Okay, when the Lord created Adam and Eve, He created them in a serene garden, everything was beautiful, they communed with God, and they, they talked to him, they heard his voice, he heard theirs, but, but when the serpent came and deceived Eve, and she, she ate the fruit and gave it to her husband, the world, the serene world that God had created uh, got thrown into chaos and after it got thrown 
Jewish people thought. They thought he was nuts. Like, doing stuff on the Sabbath day. Like, um, socializing with people he shouldn't. And doing all of, all of this. So much so that the religious people, uh, the people that were in the and the synagogues and the teachers couldn't stand him. They hated him. They were really just mad at him because he just didn't obey anything. But he didn't. He didn't. He no. He didn't break the rules. He broke them open. Which the difference is is like. When you just break the rules, you just don't follow them, you disobey them. But when you break them open, you expand them and you expand people's butt, mind and you open people's mind to a greater understanding. And that's what Jesus did in his time. He, he, he socialized with people that people didn't really socialize with. He socialized with the people that needed help, the people that were hurting physically and emotionally and all of that. And he didn't do, do that to show off his power. Well, he did to a certain extent, but I believe he more did that to show, to show, to show that the rules, they don't need to be broken, but they need to be broken open. Like, people need to expand their mind. People need to uh, let, like, let some new understanding flow and stop, stop being so rigid. But with this understanding, but with this new revelation of who Jesus was, people just couldn't stand it. Like, because when you challenge people on what they know, when you talk about breaking open the rules, it scares them. Because people like routine, and we, and we run from... from things that are not routine, or some people love things that are not routine, depending on who you are, but generally, we like to know what's coming next, what's doing this, and who's doing that, and we, we like to know, and the Lord is calling again for a bro for a breaking open of the and I'm not saying of the moral laws or whatever. I'm not saying of those rules. Of the, of the laws that God made, keep them. Because they're for our benefit, they're for our, good, they're for our goodness. I'm not talking about those laws. I'm talking about the rules that man has made. For church, and I'm not, I'm not talking about the worldly rules that man has made. That's that's a different thing. We know those are not of God or whatever. But I'm talking about a breaking open of the rules for church that man has made, and the rules for uh, Christianity that man has made uh, through the years. Um, from Paul until now, um, going down in church history, we've made rules that that God hasn't been any part of. Like we've just made rules because this this is something that we do, and and I'm not saying that rules are a bad thing, but it's time to break it open. Uh, not breaking the rules, but breaking open the rules. Exp
expanding our mind to what God really wants to do. Um, I ask some crazy questions to myself sometimes. Um, I, I, I say to myself, I look at Jesus' ministry and how he ministered to people. And how we do it now, and I'm like, there is something, like, not right here. Um, and I'm like, how about the Lord? What do you want us to gather every Sunday in, uh, in churches like we do with doors closed and for two hours and and worship, however our, our liturgy goes, I'm like, do you want us to do that, or, or would you like something else? As I look at, as I look at the ministry of Jesus and how he walked with people and talked with people and really discovered where people were hurting and what the needs were. That most interesting thing about the Bible to me is that Jesus came and tackled the issues of his day. And he was not afraid to tackle the issues of his day. He, he went out into the streets and like, tackle the issue of his day and we focus on the miracles, the healing, the signs and wonders. But I think there's a bigger picture. Like Jesus focused on the issues of his day, like um a bit of right racism with the Samaritans was going on. So he he um met with a Samaritan woman, um, so, and a bit of, like, uh, classism was going on, so he, he met with every class, he met with, he met with, uh, what we would call, uh, ladies of the night, he, he met with tax collectors, he didn't care if you were rich or poor or whatever, and he also taught outside the synagogue, but he didn't yell it from the streets. He sat down with people, and yes, he did do the big gatherings, but um, when, like, people just followed him because he was, he cared about them individually individually and that brought people to him and I, I'm asking scary questions I'm like okay God uh, how do we do that today like he wasn't locked in buildings in fact um, I, I can't recall a time where he did teach in the synagogue. Maybe there was a time, when, and I'm just not recalling it to mind, but, you know, he mostly talked with people. He walked with people. He was with them in their pain, and people, people often focus on the issue, but I think it's deeper than the issue of healing or whatever. I think he knew the issues of his day and he tackled them in a way that that the people of his day can understand uh and he told stories so that people uh could understand him called parables he he uh he took the principles of the kingdom and put them in a way that he could under that people of his day could understand. Um, people in the Jewish culture that Jesus uh, came up in were 
farmers, they were big into agriculture and stuff. So that's why you hear a lot in the Bible about uh, the kingdom of God being like a, 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 you, you can have faith as much of a as much as a, if you have faith as big of a mustard seed, you can move, move mountains. Because that imagery, he knew how to use it to to explain principles of the kingdom. And when I think about today, I think I think uh, the biblical references are wonderful. But I think we're missing the uh, the principle, the principles. Like it's it's not for me when I look at the Bible. It's really not about for me not not so much about what he taught. Although what he taught is very important, but it's the principles that he used, the principles of the kingdom, how he came down and addressed the issues of his day without fear. And I think, um, and I think we're in a space now that we are um, afraid of the church to address key issues. Now, I'm not saying to get political or tell people who to vote for or like go on tangents and all that, but I'm saying I'm saying it's time to break open the rules. It's time to expand our minds to take off this churchy mentality that we have to do things this way, we have to do things that way. We have to do things the other way because I think God wants so much to do beyond what we can even think of, but we're just so stuck in church has to be on Sunday or Saturday depending on your uh, denomination, or church has to be in a building from 11 to... 130 or whatever. I think all of our rules are preventing God from really shaping us. And I was thinking about, I was thinking about even our, um, even our music in Christendom. Um, people in Christendom love it. They just love it. And, and it is necessary. It is wonderful. There there are wonderful songs, wonderful um, wonderful messages and whatever. But I was thinking I was um, thinking like if somebody who was not in Christendom was uh, Christendom meaning the body of Christ, uh, would they get Christ in this music? Would they get it? Would they, would it bring them to uh, their knees? Would it make them want to experience God? Like, if this was, like, if an atheist was, I was like, if an atheist was listening to this, and they, like, were just totally, God's not real. That is a bunch of bull crap. Would this, um, stir them to, to Christ? And I had to say that, no, it would 
um, disabled bus service for those of you who disabled uh, door to door uh, uh, service that um, is in Sparta for those of you who are not living in Sparta. And I was listening to Black or White the other day and I thought, oh my god, we should be writing stuff like this! Like, not to be political, but but just to bring these issues to heal, because there is nothing like art to bring understanding to an issue. I love those church songs. I love the, the hymns. I, I love the worship songs. But I'm, I'm just thinking of Jesus and his ministry and how he used um, the, the what he had in his day to bring people to Christ. And instead of um, complaining that social media is bad, like, so, why don't we use it for more than putting up sermons or whatever? Like, let's change the narrative. Like, I'm just seeing so much. And I'm not saying that the people in the bikers aren't trying, but I'm saying that, like, we just need to break open the rules of what we think, what, what we think is church, what we think is God, what we think is ministry, and start just, just being the church and breaking open those barriers, those rules that we put on the church and just cutting the ribbons and letting God flow as he does. And um, it's just something I've been thinking about. And I think even um, I'm I'm breaking open the rules when I when I started this thing because usually usually um, when you hear a sermon there's a scripture and then there's uh, four points and then you know the preacher brings brings it to a close. But for me, I I do read my Bible, but I would tell you um, um, most of the stuff I get, most of my sermons don't come when I'm reading the Bible. They come when I'm just living my life. And with me, he's he's broken um, some of the rules of preaching. And I thought, Lord, is this preaching? And he says, yes, because you are a rule breaker uh, when it comes to uh, teaching and preaching the gospel. He says, I've made you that way. And he says, I think other people that way, but the problem is uh, they haven't broken open their minds yet. They think that uh, the only way they can find God is in, is in church and whatever. And he says, Rachel, I want you to talk about your relationship with me. And I'm going to kind of talk about how I relate to God and how our relationship kind of breaks the rules. Um, when, I, when I think about how I relate to God, it's very strange uh, because ever since I was a little girl, we've, God and I have had this connection and it's just not been like a religious and spiritual connection. Like, it's been an everyday connection. So, so what? What? When I say I spend time with God, the time with God never stops. So 
I could be at the doctor's office and talking to God under my breath. You know, like, Lord, what do you think of this and whatever. I could be anywhere talking to God. The co the conversation with me and the Lord doesn't stop. So, so what people say, you need to spend time with God. You need to make time with God. For me, it sounds really strange because I walk in time with God. And you can too. Time with God doesn't have to be separate in your bedroom. It could mean like you're talking to him on your on your way to work and, or you're praying or interceding on your way to work. He like it doesn't have to be like a few minutes. So he wants to be invited into your life. He wants to be with you when you're watching Netflix. He wants to be with you when when people come online to meet you and you're like, Lord, should I add them? And he's like, yes, add that person. Or he's like, no, 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 I don't want you to add that person or whatever. And the, the, the more time you invite him into your life, and that God doesn't have to be a separate thing, is the better you get at hearing his voice. So if you want to hear his voice, invite him into you every day. You don't have to uh, set aside specific, uh, you, could, you could set aside specific stuff, but you don't have to. Just invite him in, you know, when you're standing in the grocery line and you're making a decision on your budget and you're like, should, should, should I get apples today or should I get pe pears? You could talk to the Lord about that. He cares about stuff like that. And that would be breaking the rules because the rules, when I was growing up, you say, you need time with the Lord. Have you had your time with the Lord this morning? I'm like, I'm like, um, I don't consider time with the Lord. I consider it light with the Lord. And he is saying to someone today, I want life with you. I don't want time with you. Because time with you means it's a certain schedule. When I book time for a doctor's appointment at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, that time is scheduled for me to be with my doctor. Uh, when, my family, when my family comes over at a certain time, that time is scheduled for me and my family. Um, but he doesn't want time with you. He wants life with you. And he wants to do life together. He wants to be involved when you're watching Netflix. He wants to be involved when you're listening to music and not just Christian music. He wants to be involved when you're, when you're dating. He wants to do life with you. He wants to, uh, when you're, when you have a question or whatever, asking him to be automatic. You don't have to be somewhere to ask him. You can even say it in your head. Um, I don't know how many times I've been somewhere and been printed in my head. And it's not that, and it's not so, super spooky and spiritual that I go in like, oh, I speak in tongues all the time. No, no, no. It's just like, God, what would you like me to do about this or whatever? And some people say, you can't be casual with God. But what, I, what I'm learning is, because, is that God uses my personality and my way to communicate with him to communicate with me. So maybe that person cannot be uh, casual with God, but maybe he's allowed 
want me to because that's how I speak to him. And um, I, I don't think, no, we, we need to take God for granted. He is king. He is all of that. But saying that for us, he wants to do life with us. And he, he, he wants us to know that, yes, he is mighty, he is king, he is lord, but he also wants to do life with us. He wants to be involved in every decision. And you don't need, like, um, like huge prayer for every decision. Just maybe a little word, like, Lord, what, what do I do? You don't even have to bow your head. You, you can just say, Lord, what, what do I do? Because he wants to do life together. We often say that um, in relationships you can find someone uh, that you can find someone that you that you can't live without. And the first person that you can't live without is Jesus. So he wants to do life with you. He doesn't just want to spend time with you. Because spending time with you means I set aside an hour to read my Bible or whatever. Um, but he wants to do life with you. And in that, yes, you might carve out time for Bible reading and whatever, depending on your schedule. But more, but more so, he wants to be involved in your life. He wants to be involved with your kids. He wants to be involved with your grandkids. He wants to be involved with your appointments. He wants to help you set your schedule or whatever. And when you walk with God like that, you you realize that life becomes easier. And yes, there are lonely times, but it's less so because you always have some someone to to talk to and be with. And and God will send the right people into your life. Because you do need people into your life. But first of all, you need to let God in that space. And let him lead you to the proper people. To the proper friends. To the proper groups. That you want for your life in that season. So guys, thank you so much for being with me today. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you guys, like, every, every Sunday or whenever I put one of these up, just being with me. It's so 